Thank you so much for joining in. Um, take two, because apparently I like saying, um, like, uh, uh, um, um, a lot. So, maybe we can cut that two minutes of that down. But, yeah, um, give me a second while I get my words straight. No, really, I, the whole thing with this thing apparently i enjoy taking thumbnails that are very awkward so i thought i'd join in on that but with this video i would like to share with you my shepherd's rod testimony and i guess that's it with the title my shepherd's rod testimony and without further ado I'm just going to read it straight through the paper because if I don't, I'm just not going to know what to say at all in the slightest. And that's where two minutes of the was. <laughs> so I do appreciate you taking the time to watch this. And in all seriousness, I do pray that it helps you in that if there is an event going on in your church, and even if you don't understand it, listen to your spirit. Listen to what your heart is calling you. That you may be very new. You may be old and just now coming back to church. But just listen to the spirit and listen to what your heart is pulling you to do through your situation. And any event that's going on at church that you want to do but you're being pulled back from so i'm just going to share this and pray that it helps you um when i first met colin i wasn't going to church at all i knew a god existed but had nothing with him as church in my past made me feel like god does not want me the church itself didn't do that the church itself was very loving towards me, but my real mom made me feel that way. So I had no connection with God, no church, no pastor, no devotion, and no idea of, of who God truly is. And that all happened when I was 12. And then from 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 2021 20, so nine years i just didn't have god in my life like i knew god and i would talk to him when i was in trouble but that's another story but in reality is that i just didn't recognize god and no, I wasn't living with my real mom. I stopped living with her, with my real mom when I was 15. But it had an impact that I wasn't going to church for nine years. So then, so then one day at his mom's, we were invited to church and I didn't want to disappoint her. So I said, sure. Well, when we got there, I felt something in the atmosphere. Not knowing what it was, but I just felt something, and then we were told there would be a night service called the Shepherd's Rod. I didn't know what a Shepherd's Rod was. I'd never heard of it. I had no idea what that term meant, what it was at all. In fact, I still didn't until we actually did the Shepherd's Rod. Um, just, I think it was last week week or a couple weeks ago so that's why i wanted to put this testimony out there it's because i didn't understand the true meaning of shepherd's rod until this following service that we had recently and um there's the and the nom again but really the atmosphere that i felt was speaking to me and pulling me 
but I didn't understand it until later. And so that's why I would like to let somebody know that if you do feel that pull, don't be afraid of it, I guess. Well, okay, I'll just continue. Well, even though I didn't participate in the AM service, I still wanted to go to the night one because of the atmosphere I had felt. Night service came, so that was in the morning. Now it's night, okay? Night service came, and when they started it, I wanted nothing to do with it. I was slouched in my chair, like slouched. I was on the phone, and whenever Colin tried to interact with me, I would just roll my eyes at him and just be like, whatever. Okay. I was very snarky, okay? Very snarky, and I wanted nothing to do with it. Um, I mean, like, my spirit wanted it, something to do with it. And yes, I initially wanted to, but I completely acted like, nope talk to the hand or talk to the phone because I was literally on the phone during the service um wearing pants and there's nothing wrong with wearing pants by the way but the pants I was wearing was like not appropriate um I didn't want to call I didn't want uh what am, I didn't want to at all but I felt something in the atmosphere calling me to do it. I felt my body in tears when I saw everyone else go under and I didn't. And even though they were doing the shepherd's rod, I still didn't understand it. But I still felt my body in my soul and everything else in tears when I was watching everyone do it. Because to me, it really was beautiful to see everyone do it. It was I can't remember what I felt. I just remember feeling hurt. And I just remember like in awe that they were doing that, something like that. Like it was beautiful to me to see. And so Colin comes back, hands me the, um, the sum in wine, the communion wine. And which is like, I think it was actually grape juice. I'm pretty, it was grape juice. But it hands me the, the communion wine. Even though I wanted to take it, for one, I felt something in the atmosphere pushing me to, but two, I felt hate that I wanted to drink more instead. I had a drinking problem and I hated that I wanted to do it, but I didn't. And so looking at that communion at uh, grape juice, it was like the wine of Jesus, the, the blood of Jesus. And it felt wrong to take it because I wanted to drink more. So I didn't do it because the feelings that I wanted to do something more than that. So it felt like I shouldn't do it. <clears throat> so I just ignored Colin and went back on the phone and slouched. And I didn't realize this, but that hurts someone when you're taking someone to do communion and under the shepherd's rod. And don't get me wrong, don't, don't force yourself to do that just because somebody else it's it's a very very personal relationship between you and god and between your decision to take communion and go under the shepherd's rod is very personal decision that should not be influenced just because everybody else is doing it no that's not what i'm saying i'm just getting at that there was that i hurt somebody wanting me to do it and I wanted to but it just hurts so just I don't know just whatever you're going through just appreciate the people around you who are trying to pull you to that atmosphere that you're denying 
is what I'm trying to say. Very lengthy. When I should have just said that, but I didn't have the words for it. So thank you, Lord, for giving me the words. But, yes. Just don't be too hard on the people that are pulling you in because it hurts them seeing you like that. And so, and when we got into the car, I was in tears because I really wanted to, but didn't because I also thought it's not for someone like me to go under. So instead, I just felt terrible, but I also felt a different presence come over me that was more of a dark comfort. Um, yes, I, when we got in the car, even though I was acting like a jerk, I just started crying in tears because I really wanted to, but I didn't. But then the atmosphere that I felt at church, which was loving, comfort, admiration, and all of those good and godly feelings was in the church, but then... When I got in the car, there was a different feeling of comfort, which was a dark comfort, um, a not good comfort, but I didn't understand that. I didn't know that. I just felt that it was off. I just felt like it was off compared to the feeling at church, but I didn't understand why it felt off. It just felt off. Well, because of the atmosphere, I felt I wanted to keep going back, even though it had taken a while for me to yield. But when I realized the love of God was what that atmosphere was, and the dark comfort was demons, I have been praying, please let there be another shepherd's rod. I want to go under and give what you were trying to give to me. Um, yeah. I later realized we later realized that those dark comfort feelings were actually demons comforting you because they were happy that I didn't yield. Well, then learning the difference and growing with God over a year, two years, etc. We have only been back in church for two years, but I say etc. because, well, there's no time limit on going with God. So, as, as I learned the difference, I, I have been praying continuously. So that's where that comes from, is that um, the shepherd's rod was either a week or two ago. And I wanted to give to God, but I didn't give what he was trying to give to me. And I say it like that because it was always mine to take. And it was always mine, but I didn't take it. And I wanted to give my, like give as in give my body, give my yielding to him what I didn't yield before. But I would say this, maybe you're watching this and there was a shepherd's rod that you didn't do. Well, we had plans to go somewhere. And when I heard that the shepherd's rod was going to happen, I was in the bathroom and I was crying in the bathroom because I heard it. But then when Colin said, I don't know if we might make it or something, he didn't say that. But like it was a conversation that led to me thinking that. And then I was just crying and crying, crying. And he said, does... You went under the shepherd's rod when you were baptized. You don't need more. So, I also just want to remind you that you were baptized. And although the shepherd's rod is a very personal communion with the church and the body and your pastor and God and covering, and it's a beautiful thing, your baptism means just as much. So don't let that be taken away. Um, and then, and that was three years ago, and this year is going to be the shepherd's rod. When I had heard about it, I was in the bathroom and started crying because I have a church, a pastor, a church family, a God that I can go under in one accord since knowing the love of God since the first time.
So thank you, Jesus. Yes. Um. <clears throat> my mouth is dry. I'm sorry. But yes. Uh. And then God answered. I mean, I assume He was gonna answer whether I prayed it or not, just because it's it's a tradition for the church to do it. And last year they couldn't do it because of COVID, but this year they did. Well, I, I don't want to take too much more time. My throat is very dry. And so that's a lot of um and um and um. Too bad there's not a water called um and um. Just kidding. That was a bad joke. I'm sorry. But yes. I just wanted to leave that testimony with you and encourage you that <coughs> if you miss an event at church, fine. You were baptized. You're covered. But if you feel that calling and you feel that urge, whether you're baptized or not, don't let the enemy drag you into a dark comfort that not, is not the love and the atmosphere of God. So I pray that this helps you. And I pray that... If you're going through something like that, just remember that the Lord loves you and that he's the God of comfort, not not the demons that you that are wanting you. I'm sorry. This is why I read from the paper because otherwise I would just go on and on and on and on and on. Um I'll close with prayer though. Lord, thank you so much that I was able to go under the God. Thank you so much for revealing to me how much it means and what it actually is before I actually done it. I appreciate you for giving me of all my sins and I pray that this helps somebody. And I'm sorry for saying um so much and like and uh, etc. And for being so lengthy I'm sorry for doing that. I do pray, though, nonetheless, that this helps somebody. And if it doesn't help somebody, and even if nobody ever watches it, <coughs> that this video is a prayer to you that you get this video. And it's a prayer to you. Even if nobody else watches it, you watch it. And it is a prayer that, Lord, you send somebody and that, you call somebody and they respond and they answer because of this prayer. In Jesus' name, thank you so much. I pray, amen.